Hello and welcome back to the another episode of Daily Quiz for IAS Prelims 2025. It is 28th October today and in this video we are going to derive the important prelims based questions from these important articles which are mentioned on this slide. You know, before we will start our discussion, I would like to give the brief introduction of this uh, video so that you will get more connected with it. You know, every day in this video, we discuss three types of questions. The first set of questions which we discuss in here is taken from the static, is taken from the current affairs topics. You know what we do? We take up the most important articles from the newspapers. We break them down into the simplest language possible and derive the prelims based questions from those articles which can be asked in your exam. So that it will give the idea how the questions can be framed from these news articles which are in the news daily. And the another set of questions which we discuss here is taken from the static portion as uh, every day we are discussing some static topic here and we started with Indian polity. And every day we discuss an article from Indian polity here. And today we are going to discuss Article 26 of the Fundamental Rights and derive a prelims based question from it. After discussing the static topic questions and the current affairs questions, we will shift our approach to the last part of our discussion, where we will discuss few previous year questions. You know, we will take up some previous year questions. We will try to find out the ways and methods used by the UPSC examiner while framing your paper. We will try to find out the ways and methods, methods by which we can solve these questions and also how we can implement this knowledge in the upcoming exam. So at the end we are going to discuss few previous year questions. So this is in nutshell about this video what we discuss here. Now as we are going to start our discussion, I would like to request you guys few things here first. First of all, please do watch the full video. You know, it is going to be very much important for you. And trust me, it is worthy to watch. You know, as I already told you, what are my sources for these questions which we are going to discuss here. And trust me, it is the same source used by the UPSC. So there are high chances that many questions can coincide or if not the questions, but the statements. Even if not the statements, but the concepts will definitely coincide when they are going to frame the questions. So being on the safer side, it is best for you to watch the full video, grab as much knowledge as possible and prepare yourself well before the exam. And another thing which I want to request you guys is please do note down these questions somewhere with you or take at least take the screenshot of these questions. You know, it is going to be very much beneficial for you. You know, when your exams would be near and you would want to revise the current of your static portion but at that time, the time won't permit you because you would have very limited time. At that time, you would have to go through the CSAT portion also. You will have to go through the current affairs. You will have to go through many sources. But, you know, if you have these questions with you, since we are doing this from last five months at least, I guess, if you have these questions with you, you would definitely revise the questions and these questions would definitely connect you with the current affairs as well as the static part. Also, it will give the brief idea about the current affairs as well as the static part. So it will also boost your confidence as you are solving these many questions before the exam and it will definitely help you in clearing your next year's preliminary exam. So it is best for you to note down these questions somewhere or at least take the screenshot of these questions. And another thing uh, which I want to mention here, please do write in the comments what else should we bring for you. You know, you want to criticize us, please do criticize us so that we will improve ourselves. But be little respectful in that. Please do interact with us. You know, if you like the video, please appreciate us. Hit the like button, share it with your friends and please do subscribe the channel so that it will boost our confidence for preparing much better uh, videos for you guys. Now with this Without wasting any time, let's have a slight look at the topics from where we had taken today's questions. You know, it won't take us more than five or six minutes. We'll get a brief idea from these topics and then taking this idea forward and we'll solve the questions from the next slides. The first article which was mentioned in the newspaper is basically about the Delhi air quality index, why it is deteriorating. You know, majorly what we say that it is the stubble burning which leads to this uh, air quality index in Delhi, but this is not the only uh, cause for the 
air pollution in Delhi. According to this article, which we have, we are, which was in the newspaper today, it is said that a research was done by IIT, you know, IIT Kanpur and Delhi. They had found out that it is the only 22% of the air pollution which is in Delhi is contributed due to the uh, stubble burning. So right now, if we look at the Delhi's air pollution that this Delhi's air pollution is only contributed if we look at the numbers which are mentioned in this uh, news article it says that only 22 to 35 percent is contributed from is the contribution from the stubble burning so here we can get an idea that stubble burning is not the sole source of the air pollution so we have to come away from this discussion which we often see that it is the stubble burning there are many other major sources also which contribute to this air pollution if we look at the data given in today's newspaper we can see that the pm 2.5 levels has gone up crossing 300 mark pm10 has also crossed 335 330 mark also carbon monoxide it has crossed 41 mark uh, nitrogen oxide it has crossed 72 and also ozone it has crossed 89 so we are seeing that there is huge air pollution in uh, in the delhi region so if we it is not only the stubble burning, there are other sources also. If we look at the industries, they contribute to the air pollution. Vehicles, they contribute to the air pollution. And also uh, other uh, so other uh, so things done by the uh, government officials also, and also the people in Delhi, which leads to the contribution to this Delhi air pollution. So in this regard, you know, we should know what, uh, what are the, you know, what is the major way forward to curb this air pollution. If we look at the stubble burning, if we look at the data from 2018 till 2024, in 2018, uh, there were 17,467 cases of stubble burning in the Punjab region only. And it has reduced to 1,749 cases only now. So we are seeing huge drift, huge uh, you know, reduction in the stubble burning in the Punjab region, but still the air pollution is increasing. So it clearly shows that there, there are other sources also. So with this, what can be asked in our exam, uh, you know, uh, what are the recent trends with respect to the stubble burning, they can ask you. And also they can ask you what are the major sources, what is the, what is, uh, what are uh, the, uh, you know, polluters of air, they will give you the, you know, materials in it. They will give you the, give you the molecules in it, whether they are the polluters or not. So we should know that what are the major polluters of our air quality. So this is in nutshell about the article which was in the news today. So with respect to this, we will, there we had brought up the graded response action plan also to curb this air pollution, to curb the sources which contribute to the air pollution. So with respect to that, we will solve a preliminary based question and get more idea about it. So with this, let's move to the another article which was in the news. It is about the beyond intoxication. So what is the idea behind this? You know, we know the seventh schedule in which different items are given in the Indian constitution, different items are given to the center, different items are given to the states and different items are given to the both center and states. So they come under the concurrent list and few are reserved for this uh, center. So here, why, what is the discussion here? It is about liquor. You know, if we look at the Indian constitution under the seventh schedule, it is clearly given to the uh, state, it is under the state list. So in liquor, it should be controlled by the states and it is the major source of uh, income for the states. But in liquor, there are two types of uh, liquors. One, it is one is used for the industrial purposes and another is used for the consumption of the people. So we can say there are two types of liquor, industrial liquor and portable liquor. You know what the government did, central government did, they said that, look states, you take up the portable liquor which the people consume, you take it and the central and the industrial liquor and industrial alcohol will will you know uh, can we will control that but uh, they, it did not went well with the states they went to the supreme court and supreme court in the nine uh, constitutional bench uh, uh, judgment they uh, clearly said that this liquor it is under the control of the states and only the state should control uh, its taxation and uh, should control the liquor in overall whether it is uh, whether it is industrial alcohol or the portable alcohol so with respect to this uh, you know what can be asked in the exam a direct question can they can ask a direct question with respect to liquor in which list does it come under the seventh schedule or 
they can ask you a question about the differences between the industrial alcohol and portable alcohol so with respect to the portable industrial alcohol you know uh, industry you know the central government they had, they brought up a law industries development and regulation act 1951 in which uh, they brought this uh, portable uh, is this industrial alcohol under the central uh, uh, guidance under the central control so the uh, supreme court uh, nine judge bench gave a uh, clear, uh, clarified it that it, uh, the center has misused its provisions and it has nullified this provision of this uh, industrial development and regulation act of 1930 1951 so this is in nutshell about this article what we get from this uh, about the liquor under which list does it come which has the control over it and what are the different types of liquor which uh, are mostly used and they are industrial alcohol and the portable one then the another article uh, which was in the news today is about the union cabinet approval pme drive scheme you know this is the union cabinet has approved pme drive scheme uh, which will be providing funding and uh, you know incentives to the public uh, you know and incentives for the electric buses for public Uh, transportation you know in this uh, scheme they are going to contribute the 14000 crore would be contributed to this uh, scheme pme bus seva payment security mechanism so there is a one drawback that the private sector has not been included in it so this was the issue and it was discussed in the article after that there is another article in the news which talks which basically talks about this uh, rate of cyber crimes as it has increased Uh, in the banking transaction increased and majorly it is seen that uh, the private sector banks are more uh, you know being getting involved in these cyber frauds you know they are being the victims of these cyber frauds so this is what we need to know from this article after that here comes the another article it talks about the nature uh, Conver- conservation index 2004 24 you know it has been brought up the first time it is developed by the Ben Gurion University of the Israel and biodb.com you know they collaborated and developed this natural conservation index 2024 and you know it has ranked India at 176th position and India is not going to accept that because they think it is very much biased and in it what are the parameters to judge uh, the uh, nature conservation index so parameters are land management uh, uh, threats to biodiversity capacity and governance and also future trends these are some parameters used by the nature uh, conservation index that there is another article it is about the pm as he has warned about indian citizens of digital arrest you know it is the new fraud which has come come to the surface that the uh, fraud and fraudulents they will act as some government officials or police officials and they will call somebody and uh, tell them that you have, your bank accounts has been involved in uh, terrorist terrorist financing or money laundering and they will impose such a pressure on them that they will tell them to go in isolation don't talk to anybody that you are digitally arrested so with respect that they will uh, you know take uh, out their money so the pm uh, he has warned in monkey bar that uh, these the if the government uh, officials they want to arrest you they will not arrest you digitally they will come to your home and arrest you so this uh, not shall about the uh, digital arrest and by uh, with respect to this we will solve a preliminary based question and get more idea about it after that this certain it has also given its guidelines with respect to the digital arrest and it has also as uh, uh, you know warned the people what how the uh, fraudlands are uh, you know uh, violating the people how they are taking away their money and you know uh, giving huge stress to those people so it has given the guidelines that you should follow Uh, and save yourself from these frauds after that there is another article it is about the thwartes glacier you know we need to know its location it is located in located in west antarctica uh, ice sheet so this is what is needed here as it is melting it can lead to the huge uh, it, it can lead to lead to the uh, surge in the uh, you know uh, floods in the coastal areas nearby so this is what is important for us from this article what we get i hope from this discussion i had uh, discussed every article in nutshell i hope you had got the basic idea what was in the news so by taking this knowledge into the consideration now let us solve a question one by one and get more idea about that
here the first question it is about let us see what does it say it says which of the following statements regarding the graded response action plan in delhi is our correct first statement grap was implemented to tackle air pollution in delhi and surrounding regions 100% correct second the plan categorizes pollu pollution levels into different stages each triggering specific actions to mitigate air quality issues 100% correct nothing wrong with the statement too then the third statement the grape is only applicable during the diwali festival this is only totally incorrect it is applicable throughout the year so this statement is totally incorrect with respect to this question the correct statements are option 1 and option 2 only so with this i hope you had got the basic idea what was in the news about the uh, uh, role of stubble burning in the uh, air pollution whether it is the uh, sole reason why there is surge in the air pollution or there are an another reasons also and also the geography of delhi also contribute to the air pollution uh, rise in the winters as there are retreating monsoons and the air in the delhi is very still and these air pollut pollutants contribute more pollution to the region so and also we saw that what is the role of a, a grape graded response action plan how it helps in giving the guidelines and restricting the pollutants which contribute to the air pollution so with this let's move to the another question and try to solve that here the question says which of the following statements correctly describe the classification of liquor under the 7th schedule of the indian constitution as we saw that house 9 judge constitutional bench gave its verdict that uh, liquor whether it is uh, uh, you know industry liquor or the portable liquor it is under this state list so let's see what does this question say First statement: Liquor is mentioned under the state list, allowing states to regulate its production, sale, and consumption. 100% correct. Nothing wrong with this statement. Second, the union list includes provisions for the regulation of liquor, particularly in matters related to interstate trade. Totally incorrect. Third statement: The concurrent list has provisions that empower both the center and the states to legislate liquor-related matters. Totally incorrect. So, with respect to this question, the correct statement is option one only. So with this, let's move to the another question and try to solve that. Here the question is about the cyber frauds in banking. The question says which of the following statements regarding cyber frauds in banking transactions is are correct? First statement: Cyber fraud in banking includes phishing, where attackers trick individuals into providing sensitive information through deceptive emails or websites, and also they can call. So this is one of the source. This is correct. Second option: The Reserve Bank of India has no role in setting guidelines. It is totally incorrect. Reserve Bank of India ha has set up the guidelines for banks to enhance cyber security measures against such frauds. Third statement: Multi-factor authentication (MFA) is a recommended practice to enhance security in online banking transactions and mitigate the risk of cyber fraud. This is totally correct. So, with respect to this question, the correct statements are option one and option three only. And from the code given below, the correct code would be option. C. With this, let's move to the another question and try to solve that. Here, the question is about the Nature uh, Conservation Index 2024 uh, has been released by which of the following organization? UNDP, no. WHO, no. IIT Kanpur with IIT Delhi, no. Uh, ben uh, Gurion University of the Israel, 100% correct. So, with respect to this question, the correct statement is option D. With this, let's move to the another question and try to solve that. Here the question is about the digital arrest. You know, a direct question is very rarely can be asked on it. But the idea behind giving you this question is to give you the idea what does this digital arrest mean? How does it, uh, you know, impact your? How it can impact your life? How if maybe a question can be asked in means or even the UPSC is very much unpredictable. They can directly ask you a question on it. So let us have a look at it. The first statement: Digital arrest fraud typically involves a scam, involves scammers posing as law enforcement officers to extort money from victims. 100% correct. Second statement: Such fraud often utilizes social engineering techniques to create a sense of urgency, prompting victims to act quickly without verification. Correct. Third statement: The government has no specific laws. It is totally incorrect. government does have specific laws you can call different cyber security agencies and they have specific laws or frameworks to combat digital arrest and fraud making it uh, you know they can make it easy for the victims to seek the justice so statement 3 is incorrect with respect to this question the correct statements are option 1 and 2 only and from the code given below the correct code is option a with this let's move to the uh, another question uh, the question is about the certain let's see what does it mean 
uh, without the following statements about certain is are correct first statement certain is the national uh, agency responsible for uh, responding to cyber security incidents and threats in india 100% correct the agency provides real time data and analysis to help organizations mitigate potential cyber risks 100% correct certain operates under the ministry of electronics and information technology this is this part is correct and is solely responsible for enforcing cyber security laws no it is not responsible for imposing cyber security laws so with respect to this question the correct statement is option 1 and 2 only and from the code given below the correct code is option a with this let's move to the last question of from the current of your topics let's solve it sorry we had uh, completed the current affairs topics now it is the uh, static portion which has started and in static portion we have brought up the one question here and we are going to discuss it in uh, very good detail the question says which of the following statements regarding article 26 of the indian constitution is correct the first statement article 26 guarantees the right to manage religious affairs including the establishment and maintenance of religious institutions 100% correct Second statement to the article allows the government to interfere in the internal management of a religion if it poses a threat to public order 100% correct you know this uh, law this uh, freedom uh, of religion which is given under article 26 is not absolute it can be restricted on some basis and public order is one of that then the third statement says article 26 applies to the hindu religion and does not extend to other religions Uh, practice it in india this is totally incorrect it will make it authoritarian so this statement is totally incorrect and absurd statement so with respect to this question the correct statements are option 1 and 2 only and from the code given below the correct code is option a so with this we had solved the question from the static portion also now let's move to the last part of our discussion which is solving questions from the previous year question book as we had taken two questions from the previous year question book so let's try to solve that Here the first question is during the Indian freedom movement why did the Rowlatt Act arouse popular indignation so what was the reason that the people started revolting against the Rowlatt Act what was in it what did it curtail does it curtail the freedom of religion no it was not the reason it suppressed the indian traditional education neither it it curbed trade union activities neither this one it authorized it authorized the government to imprison people without trial this was the major reason uh, as there was huge protest in the jallianwala bagh also because of this so for this question the correct statement is option c this is the reason why the rowlatt act arose as a popular uh, indignation so for this question the correct statement is option c now moving to the last question of today's discussion it says which of the following begin with the dandi march it is definitely civil disobedience movement everybody knows it so with this we solo we had completed today's discussion i hope you would like the video i hope you would share it with your friends and i definitely hope you would subscribe the channel thank you for staying with me thank you very much have a nice day